Today our topic of focus would be a very important cranial nerve and that would be the nerve of vision. So as you can well understand, it is the optic nerve which we will be dealing today. We have to remember the various cranial nerves, the number of the cranial nerves, 12 pairs and today we are dealing with the second cranial nerve. So the optic nerve is the second cranial nerve, very important from neurological perspective, neuroanatomical perspective, neurosurgical perspective and ophthalmological perspective obviously. Uh, we will be discussing first of all the very important course of the optic pathway, not the optic nerve only as such. So we will go through the whole course of the optic pathway, then we will be dealing with the important clinical correlations and the applied part of the optic nerve. So basically there are certain peculiar features about the optic nerve. Number one is that, well, it's a sensory nerve and it is the nerve of vision as you can well have a look. And number second thing is that it develops as a part of the forebrain. So it is a part of the diverticulum of the brain and it is not a true nerve. And number third is that it is scored by the meninges and any problem with the meninges can be reflected in the optic nerve as well. Another important point is that it does not possess a neurolingual sheath and once gone, it is gone forever. So it is not capable of regeneration to a very great extent. Then it leaves the orbit through the optic canal and it's a very important area because herein it travels along with the ophthalmic artery and any lesion, I mean to say benign or malignant, can just compress the ophthalmic artery, uh, lesion like optic nerve glioma and that can compress the ophthalmic artery and cause visual problems. Now leaving that aside, once we have got any pathway going up into the cerebrum and while we have to appreciate that, we have to remember that we always have a receptor, a pathway to the thalamus, a nucleus in the thalamus and a radiation from the thalamus to the cortex and a sensory area in the cerebrum which appreciates that particular sense. So as far as the optic nerve is concerned, it follows the same thing. It has got a receptor, it has got a pathway to the thalamus, it has got a nucleus in the thalamus and it has got a radiation from the thalamus to the cortex and the area within the cerebrum which will be coming across. So as you can have a look at the figure, so our figure shows the vision. Our vision basically is divided into two parts, the lateral part called the temporal part and the medial part called the nasal part. And you can see these regions cross. So the lateral part is reflected on the medial part and the medial part is reflected on the lateral part. So here you have the right eye and the left eye and you can see that the optic nerve emerges from the posterior aspect of the eyeball and enters to the optic canal and then goes backwards. Now, you have to remember the terminology in a very simplified manner and you have to be very specific about the various destinations. So first of all, we have the optic nerve and then you can see the optic nerve fiber crosses at a point which you call as optic chiasma. But here there's a peculiar arrangement that the, all the fibers of the optic nerve do not cross. We have got this crossing at various levels in various other parts as we have the motor decussation, the pyramidal decussation, the sensory decussation and as well as the trapezoid fibers while the fibers of the cochlear pathway cross from the right to the left and from the left to the right. In a similar manner we have got this optic chiasma but there's a peculiar arrangement of the fibers that only the nasal side of the fibers cross. At the optic chiasma only the nasal side of the fibers cross not the temporal fibers. This has got a clinical significance which we will be discussing at a later point in this class. So over here remember that at the optic chiasma the nasal fibers decussate and the temporal fibers do not decussate and then in addition to that we have got a very important relation as far as optic chiasma is concerned because just beneath the optic chiasma lies the pituitary gland. I will be coming to that in a short period of time. So optic nerve, optic chiasma, then the optic chiasma just continues beyond at the optic pathway in the form of optic tract. So this is the optic tract. 
the area C represents the optic tract. And what we have, we have got at the thalamus, behind the thalamus, two small bodies, which we call as the lateral geniculate body and the medial geniculate body. We have to remember that L for L, the lateral geniculate body is concerned with vision. It is roughly a thalamic center for vision. So lateral geniculate body is a center for vision. And from the lateral geniculate body, we have the fibers which have eventually to go into the cerebrum wherein the sense of vision has to be well appreciated. And what is that area? That area lies within the occipital lobe. And that is the visual area, which we give the classification as far as Broadman's classification is concerned. Area 17, the primary visual cortex, area 18 and area 19, the associated visual areas. So over here, we have got the lateral geniculate body, which is a very important center for vision. In addition to the fibers also end at the other places, other nuclei, but here we are just concentrating our focus on the lateral geniculate body as far as the visual pathway is concerned. So in here, we have got the fibers going from the lateral geniculate body to the occipital cortex, which is also given the name as calcarine cortex. So this area, the fibers from the lateral geniculate body to the occipital cortex are given two names. One is the optic radiation and second is the geniculocalcarine tract. So optic radiation and geniculocalcarine tract are synonymous because the geniculocalcarine tract starts at the lateral geniculate body and ends in the calcarine cortex. So this is the geniculocalcarine tract or the optic radiation. So in the optic pathway, we come across optic nerve, optic chiasma, optic tract, and the geniculocalcarine tract or the optic radiation. So these are the important destinations, important points within the optic pathway. Now, as you can well appreciate, we have got A, B, C, D over here and a label A, B, C, D over here. Now we come to the functional aspect of the damage to the visual pathway. As you can well appreciate that, we have got, if we have got a damage to the left optic nerve, as is here, and we can, you can see that the left damage to the left optic nerve will cause blindness in the corresponding eye. So left optic nerve damage causes blindness in the left optic nerve cause blindness of the left side now as far as the optic chiasma is concerned i told you it's a very important area here in what happens a peculiar type of visual loss occurs in case there is damage to the optic chiasma what happens you can see the lateral side of vision of both the eyes is gone and we have this classic lesion by temporal hemianopia so you just break this word into different fragments by means of both the eyes temporal temporal the temporal vision is gone so the lateral side vision of the both eyes is gone by temporal hemianopia that means whole of the vision is not gone the medial or the nasal vision is of the both eyes is preserved so by temporal hemianopia so the lateral side of vision of the both eyes is gone once we have got a lesion at the level of optic chiasma and this is given the name as bitemporal hemianopia and what is the clinical condition or correlate with that it is that beneath the optic chiasma lies the pituitary gland and sometimes we can have a tumor of the pituitary gland and in case of a small tumor we call it as the pituitary microadenoma and in case it's a large tumor it's called given the name as pituitary macroadenoma and they can compress upon the optic chiasma and cause bitemporal hemianopia. And what was the classic example? Any person who is driving can be having too many scratches on the lateral aspects on the sides of his car or his vehicle. So because he is not well able to appreciate the temporal or the lateral vision. So that's one part. Now then, a lesion at the level of optic tract. If the left optic tract is damaged, there will be loss of lesion, uh, vision on the both sides of the right eyes. A condition called as right homonymous hemianopia, in contrast to bitemporal hemianopia, what we earlier discussed. In a similar manner, if we have a lesion of the 
occipital cortex we have a similar condition as the elbow and in case there is damage to the occipital cortex as a whole we have the blindness in the corresponding eye so this is whole about the different types of visual losses which we can have along the optic pathway so different paths getting damaged and we have different clinical manifestations as far as the visual loss is concerned so that is one part now is there anything in addition to that yes as i discussed you just before this that we have got the broadband areas and we have got the broadband area area 17 area 18 and area 19 basically area 17 is the primary visual cortex and primary has got a primary role and secondary means something in addition to the primary so if there is damage to area 17 we will be having perfectly a blindness a patient will not be able to see things but what is also important is that there are those associated areas the area 18 and the area 19 and in case the area 18 of the visual cortex is damaged what do we have we have got a very peculiar type of a thing that a patient can see but cannot recognize what he sees and this is called as mind blindness so this is very important patient has the ability to see if there is specific damage to area 18 he can see but he cannot recognize what he sees so that is called as mind blindness and in case there is damage to area 19 what can happen that the patient may be able to recognize objects but cannot recall their meaning so this is called as word blindness so for vision it is not only important to appreciate what we are seeing we should be able to recap what we are seeing and we should be able to understand what we are seeing so there are these two terms the mind blindness and the word blindness which you have to remember so each area has got its own specific function although there are multiple connections many connections within every system in with especially within the nervous system and you have to remember these points so a brief recap what i just discussed with you along in this small class of mine is the optic pathway optic nerve how it exists where from it exists then crossing at the optic chiasma then the optic tract then the genicular calcarine tract or the optic radiation then the visual cortex or the calcarine cortex and then simple lesions the blindness the bitemporal hemianopia, the right homonymous uh, hemianopia, especially associated with left-sided visions and the damage to the visual cortex, what happens if there is damage to the primary visual area and the secondary visual areas. This is all what is asked in examinations and in case you just revise these points, these will be very helpful for you in your examinations, let it be any examination, NEET PG, NEXT, MRCP or any other examination. So I think that this clarifies your concept a bit. Wish you best of luck. Thanks a lot.